No, I suppose we should dive right in. We have only 30 minutes. So welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Vince DiMichel. I'm Regulatory Content Manager here at Canada Advisors. Um, handle a lot of the written content uh, for what we produce for applications and business plans um, here. I'm also joined by our project manager, Russ Hudson, uh, cannabis industry veteran and um, manager of uh, client uh, communications and projects um, at Canada Advisors for his clients. So we're going to be taking you through New Jersey today. Quick bit about Canada Advisors. Um, we have a lot of experience, um, oldest consulting firm in the industry. Um, we've worked in 33 states plus Guam and Puerto Rico. And uh, we bring all of that sort of knowledge and experience to every new state, including New Jersey. There, there, there we are. I um, already told you a little bit about us. So we'll dive right in. Okay, thanks, Vince, and welcome everyone who's attending. We've been at this for a couple of years now in New Jersey, starting with SCR 183 passage back in late 2019. It took about a year for Governor Murphy to sign that into law. And then uh, a month after he did that, the CRC was appointed and began their work, uh, which culminated um, as a major milestone in August when we had the partial regulations released. And at the same time, on August 21st of 2021, the um, deadline for opt-out for municipalities passed. The uh, next milestone that we had was just this past November when the CRC issued the final notice for applications for cultivation, manufacturing, and testing labs. That's a rolling application with no deadline. It's currently underway, although it opened on December 15th. On March 15th, the window for retail applications will begin, and those are also rolling applications with no deadline. So general information about this application, um, you know, the, the state level application you submit to the state, and then what will happen next is the state will either approve or deny that based on completeness, and then forward that to uh, the municipality um, to review and have their approval process. Um, each municipality might have different processes and requirements um, that will depend on the municipality, could be very limited, could be very arduous. Um, so that'll take getting to know the local ordinances and whatever application that municipality has set up. Um, this is a rolling window, as Russ mentioned. So this is open right now. And the only way it will close is by notification from the commission. Um, so that might come in the form of a notification that says, hey, it's closed on this date, or they might say, you know, we plan to close the window in the next two weeks. Um, there's really not a procedure set up for that. We just know that it's rolling and open now. So you can only have one open application type per applicant at a time. Basically, you cannot apply for two cultivation licenses or two manufacturing licenses. Um, you can apply for one of each though. Um, if you're holding a manufacturing license or cultivation license, you cannot apply for retail. There's kind of a split there. Um, and then you must submit via the online portal. Um, but for manufacturing cultivation licenses, you, you may only own one. Okay, so now we'll talk a bit about the differences between conditional, annual, and micro business license types. Uh, first is conditional licenses, which have a much lighter content burden comparative uh, to the other license types. You do not have to have your property or facility locked down or under control for the conditional application, but you do have to identify that property in the application process. Uh, similar with your financials, you don't have to have your funding for the project locked down, but you do have to be able to describe that process. Uh, there are income requirements of $200,000 a year for individuals or $400,000 a year for couples. That's uh, regarding the personal income of the ownership of the conditional license. And that is a, a limit, a cap, um, not, a, not a minimum requirement. Right. So that would be... <laughs> Um, the conditional licenses must be converted through a conversion license, and during that process, you do have to have your property secured, you have to have proof of local support, and you must have a labor peace agreement in place. The timeline for conditional licenses 
is basically 30 days from the time that you submit to the CRC. They have to make a decision within that time frame, although they've already been cleared that with the amount of applications, they're probably going to take longer than that. Once your conditional license has been approved, you have 120 days to submit the conversion application in which that's essentially the same as an annual application. Once that has been preliminarily approved, you then have 365 days to request and receive your final inspection. During that inspection is when you will be actually awarded the full license. And if you're a cultivator, the tier that you'll be working with. So annual licenses require a bit more, as Russ kind of mentioned. Um, you do have to have control of the property that on, in, on which you plan to locate your license. Um, you do have to have a more detailed plan for financing, not just you know a letter of commitment, but actually you know where the money is, how you use it. Um, lots of written plans and content here, mostly standard operating procedures for what you'll be doing in the given license. Um, and then the the annual license also asks for detailed experience. So have you had experience in highly regulated industries? Have you had experience in the cannabis industry? Um, though not weighted very heavily, it is required. Um, and then general business experience as well. Um, definitely the, some of the lighter requirements for experience we've seen in a state level app, um, being that they're weighted uh, less heavily, but um, they are still required and will be scored on completeness on the initial review. So do have to have some form of experience there. Timeline for annual licenses, a little bit longer. Um, so 90 days for the commission to review. We'll see what it looks like when we get closer to that deadline. Um, if they're going to go over it or not, probably will, assuming the large load of applications that they're dealing with. Um, and then similar to conversion conditional, you after you receive, sorry, similar to the conversion after you receive your conditional you have 365 days to request that final inspection. So once you get the annual license, similar to if you're approved for a conversion, you have one year to, to set up your operations and, and be ready to go. And micro businesses are pretty unique in New Jersey. Um, one of the primary requirements there are that 100% uh, of the ownership must be New Jersey residents and 51% or more must be local residents. Um, with this type of license, you cannot own any other type of adult use license. However, you can convert the micro business license to a full annual license at some point. Uh, the CRC has not issued guidance on that yet. So um, make sure to uh, follow us and check back with us when we get that guidance from the state. Uh, other requirements for micro business licenses include a total facility size not to exceed 2,500 square feet. That's for the physical plant. For cultivators within that 2,500 square feet, you could have another 2,500 square feet of cultivation space, meaning you could have 1,250 square feet of growth space double stacked. And a final requirement for micro business licenses are no more than 10 employees. So there are multiple license types. Um, we'll get into the details of each um, covering the the ones for which the application window is open now or will be open in March. So starting with cultivation, um, there are six tiers of cultivator, not including micro. So going from tier one to tier six outside of micro business. Um, this is the competitive license in New Jersey right now, capped at 37 until February of next year. Um, that may change, but that's the date to look out for when the those licenses will be uncapped, though the commission could update the regulations before then. It's unlikely. Um, and again, that window is open now, rolling basis for applications. So there's no deadline, but there is a chance that the window could close. Um, again, hopefully we'd hear about that with some kind of warning, um, but it might come out of nowhere. So manufacturing licenses, um, there's no cap on the number right now from the state. Um, there's also no square footage requirements or um, tiering system for manufacturing licenses. Um, that window is also open now, rolling basis, similar to cultivation, you know, they might close it off if they receive a certain number of applications um, that's undefined, but we don't know for sure. So testing lab, very similar, no cap there, rolling application window, um, has the normal personal and entity information burden, burden 
um, which is relatively heavy in New Jersey, um, but then you also need this evidence of the ISO certification. So special note there for testing labs, pretty standard for a lab to need the certification. And then retail licenses. These applications open on the 15th, no caps yet and no deadline. The restriction here being if a municipality is opted out. Um, so if you're trying to go for a retail license, getting that local support and finding a municipality that's going to allow retail is going to be huge. So other license types, um, the statute allows for wholesalers, distributors, and safe transporters, though the commission has said they would operate the cultivation, manufacturing, retail application windows um, before writing new regulations for these licenses. So these might come later, um, yeah, to be determined, but we might see regulations for these come out after the retail application window closes. Okay, so now we'll discuss some ways that you can get ahead with your application. And primarily that consists of uh, getting local approval, gaining priority review statuses, and some items of special consideration that we'll discuss in just a bit. The first priority review status is a social equity um, applicant where more than 50% of the ownership meets one of these criteria, that the ownership has lived in an economically disadvantaged area for five of the last 10 years and has a household income that is 80% or less than state medium, and uh, excuse me, or that are eligible to be pronounced as rehabilitated, particularly for cannabis or hashish related convictions. We recommend that you check with local counsel to make sure that um, any convictions uh, applied for under the social equity priority review status qualify under the statutes. The next priority review status is diversity, where you can apply as a minority owned, women owned, disabled owned, or all three applicant. Uh, and these must be certified by the Division of Re Revenue and Enterprise Services uh, pursuant to some state regulations that um, we'd be happy to discuss with you. Another priority review status is locating your cannabis facility in an impact zone. The requirements there are that the business is located within an impact zone and more than 50% of the ownership is held by a current resident of an impact zone who has resided there for the last three consecutive years. Or you can have 25% of your employees live in any of the state's impact zones. And among those employees who reside in those impact zones, at least 25% must reside in the impact zone nearest to the cannabis business location. So the bonus point categories is another way to get priority review in New Jersey. Um, they are being a resident for at least five years. Um, having a collective bargaining agreement with a labor organization in New Jersey, um, having that same bargaining agreement, not the exact same, but a similar one, with a labor organization in another city um, or another state, excuse me. Um, then you can also have a project labor agreement with a trades labor organization for the construction or retrofit of your facility. And then if you have a project uh, agreement with an organization for any other applicable project, um, that also counts as um, a bonus point category. These can be stacked. Um, you can have all five of them in one license application to try to get the most bonus points for priority review. Again, this will just get you points that might put you ahead of other applicants for review that did not receive these points. So not a scoring thing. Uh, you won't have your application be incomplete if you don't have these things, but other applicants might be reviewed before if, if they do and you do not. Another way to get ahead, local approval. Um, there's a possibility that there will be local license caps. Um, so, you know, that's that's up in the air now for many places, um, though many places have already opted out of retail licenses. Um, we have not seen anything about a limit on cultivators or manufacturers yet, though they can impose it. Um, so got to make sure that where you're trying to locate is going to be friendly to cannabis businesses. Um, the way we recommend doing this is meeting with the local government, getting connected to, with them as soon as possible, securing their approval, pitching that cannabis brings jobs, brings money to the city, to the town, um, and you know, really relying on a good relationship with the local government to get that approval. 
So some items of special consideration. One is that you should probably not expect to have much or any communication with the CRC. Dozens of questions have been asked by hundreds of applicants in the state and they've all gone unanswered by the commission. So um, plan to go it alone with your local council um, or consultant experts if you choose to hire them. Um, of major consideration are persons and entities of interest. And these are likely to encompass anybody or any organization or group that you involve with your project. And each requires a significant burden via the personal and entity disclosure forms. So it's very important that you download these forms as soon as possible, look them over and give them to the people and entities involved with your project to make sure that they're comfortable providing that information. Uh, everyone involved with the project other than volunteers will also need to have background checks and fingerprinting. And one, uh, one specific note on that communication with the commission, um, Russ was actually our superhero on that, finding mistakes in the application and the laws many times over, um, sending the commission a very nicely worded email, never getting a thank you, just silent updates to the commission's website and the regulations. So, you know, kind of sketchy stuff if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, thank you, Russ, for, for catching so many of those. So now we'll open it up for questions. Um, feel free to submit them via the Q&A function in the Zoom or in the comments. Um, I will stop screen sharing so I can see them. So I see an anonymous question, um, missed the first five minutes, without having a rent contract, which micro business application can I do? So just to clarify, I expect you mean without having a contract to rent a property, um, how can you apply as a micro business? Um, so that would be through the conditional application process right now. So applying as a conditional micro business, whatever, you could be a micro business retailer, cultivator, manufacturer. Um, but if you're applying conditionally, you don't have to have that contract in place yet. And then you can work on securing it as you do your conversion application. Will this recording be available later, Talia? Yes, it will. We will send it out via email. So you'll have access to that for sure. So, Piero, that's that's an interesting question. Um, you know that it 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 is competitive in that it is limited, um, and so to try to guarantee a license, um, I mean, plainly there's no way to guarantee it. Um, we have very little insight into the review process in most of these applications, and especially New Jersey. But you know, the best thing that you can do is try to hit all of those priority categories. Um, you know being located in an impact zone, being a diversely owned business and being a social equity business, and then receiving as many bonus point categories for review as you can, so that your application gets put in front of others who have not um, done that. Now, the question that we really don't know the answer to is how will New Jersey operate that? Will you get to jump the line if someone has submit before you? Um, you know, that's not clear when they'll actually start do it like so if that if if we submit 10 applications on the same day and three are high priority and the other seven aren't it makes sense that those three would be reviewed before that seven because they were submitted on the same day it's tough to say if someone submitted two weeks ago and then someone submits two weeks from now whether these the later submission if it has a higher priority will cut the queue um we we, we can't really say that for sure so the best thing you can do is just have as many priority review points um, as you can when you submit. Right, and um, to add to that, um, Piero, you'll, um, the cultivation licenses will continue to be issued after February of 2023. We don't know exactly what that looks like. So it's not like those 37 licenses mean that that's the end. Once those licenses have been issued and that deadline has passed, 
the CRC will begin uh, taking more applications. They'll continue taking applications the whole time. At some point, they'll start awarding them beyond those 37. So definitely encourage you to continue to you know, push forward with a cultivation application, irrespective of that 37 cap. Let's see, in the, from the chat from Crystal, do you think little business experience will make it unachievable to obtain a business loan for such a regulated, difficult sector? Have you had clients be unavailable to secure such a loan? Um, it definitely it definitely depends, this, this one, Crystal, because um, loans can be tricky because they come from financial institutions that usually require some form of business experience, but there are investors trying to get into the cannabis industry every day. Um, so finding the right investor might be easier than trying to secure a loan from a bank that's going to have stricter requirements for that. Um, Russ, I don't know if you have anything to add there. No, I think that's, that's exactly what I was saying. Yeah. And then Andrew, how much of an advantage do I have if I have a felony conviction for weed from 2012? I'm not eligible to get my record expunged for another 10 years due to something else. I, let me check my notes real quick on the exact language for the, uh, the convictions. One moment. And real quick, I'll just answer anonymous attendee. 37 cap is not for micro businesses. That only applies to full annual uh, cultivators. So, whether, whether your charge has been expunged or not, it will qualify you for a social equity business um, bonus. Uh, but I believe you have to have been, if you're eligible to be pronounced rehabilitated. Um, so I'm not sure if that eligibility for expungement also includes the eligibility to be pronounced rehabilitated, Andrew, but um, that would, that would, you would need to have that eligibility to qualify as a social equity business. Uh, let's see, Kip, Kit Gallon, is a cap on product manufacturing licenses likely in the future? Tough to say. Um, it, it, it could come at some point. Um, other states have done it. Other states have not. I think it really depends on how many people apply and what the market looks like. Um, so how to gauge that right now is, is really tough. Um, I would say for the, for the foreseeable future, I'll, I'll say confidently, I think that for the next two years, there won't be a cap, I agree. Um, but, but it really depends on how much the market grows or doesn't. I got a, how do I know which tier of cultivation is the right one for my cultivation license? So this is a question that we, we hear a lot. Um, you know, how, how do I choose how big of my grow? And, and, it, and it depends on a few things. I guess I'll say one thing is, is access to the facility. You know, if you have access to a facility that's, that's very large, you have a capable team, um, it makes sense to sort of maximize your production. Um, but that's the thing, you know, not everyone has access to a huge facility and a huge team. So the market in New Jersey is really going to probably allow for all tiers to be successful at first. Um, so it, it will come back to, you know, how much funding financing you can really secure the experience of the team and the size of your facility. I don't know if you have stuff to add there, Russ. Yeah, I think in general, there, there are certainly applicants who are applying for different license types and, uh, it's important to understand that in both of those licenses, for instance, if you apply for a manufacturing license and a cultivator license, you may get the manufacturing license and be denied the cultivation license. So um, I think, you know, the state is really going to be looking at the individual merit of every application. Yep. I'm, there, there it is. Um, 
So Irwin asks, is asking, are there any updates on recreational being available at dispensaries? Um, that won't come until dispensaries are operational at least um, one year, likely one year after that application window opens, um, I would say possibly faster, but um, un unlikely cultivations have to get up and running and begin to grow the recreational flower. The dispensaries have to be fully operating. So not, not in the next year, I would say. Um, I would be very happy and surprised if a year from now you could buy recreationally. It is possible, but we'll see. More likely summer 2023. Um, so Andrew, this is, you know, uh, the what's acceptable for rehabilitation and qualifying as a social equity business. Um, so you would submit information uh, along with the application, along with about yourself um, that would qualify you as a social equity business when you applied. Is your drug court in three years acceptable for rehab? I don't know off the top of my head. That's a question for a New Jersey attorney to really yeah. nail that down. Um, you know, that's, that's it's, it's it, tricky, it, it depends. Mm -hmm. And I think the last question about uh, recreational and dispensaries, um, I think Erwin was maybe asking whether ATCs are going to be allowed to start offering adult use. I don't have an answer to that. Do you, Vince? Um, so they will have had to have gone through the application process like everyone else. Um, so I think they will begin to be awarded their recreational licenses soon in the next few months. Um, then I would probably put it at about that same year of getting that recreational flower out because it just has different regulations and requirements than the medical grow. Um, so I'm not sure how quick ATCs will be able to really get rec flower into people's hands, um, but they will probably be some of the soonest approved. Like that's, that's where I would expect it to be the fastest um, is both their approval and then their operations are already very efficient. So they can set up and get going pretty fast. So Crystal, do folks with small businesses experience struggle more with cultivation or retail? Um, did you already cover that, Russ? I see she responded. No, but, not exactly. Uh, uh, I think she's commenting on, on a separate piece there, but I, I would say in New Jersey that people with little business experience are going to struggle more with retail. And in particular, it appears that the CRC is going to be analyzing retail applications more as far as um, more about business experience and less about cultivation or, or actual cannabis experience because to run a retail operation, it's essentially the same um, minus regulatory compliance related to cannabis. So I think in New Jersey, um, that's going to hit you harder for a retail application than a cultivation application. And then Biero, um, do you believe that I would have a higher chance of receiving a cultivator's license after obtaining a, re a retailer? So you cannot own a retailer and a cultivator license at the same time. So you would have to choose kind of which way you wanted to go there. I believe you can own a max of three retailer licenses. Um, so you could set up more license locations under a retailer than on the cultivation manufacturing side that you can only have one of each. Um, a follow up from Piero. Uh, do you believe I can apply from a micro business conditional cultivation? Have the grow begin with a small grow inside my house? I think I that. Res yep, go ahead. That is something that um, what the state is really concerned about is supply. So this has been a recurring theme. They're very concerned about the supply and making sure that they're able to deliver the proper supply to the state's cannabis consumers. So what they want to see is you as an applicant ready to start producing cannabis at the scale that you've indicated in your application. So for micro business cultivators, we're talking about a max of 2,500 square feet of grow space. They're going to wanna to see you be able to scale to that within the first year. I think that's outside of what you're talking about, it was a small grow inside of your house. Um, and as far as an industrial location to set up, it needs to be properly zoned. I, I doubt that most municipalities are going to approve of that, um, but I you know, certainly couldn't speak for all of them. But definitely overall for cultivators, whether micro business or annual or conditional, you wanna be prepared to start producing 
a significant amount of supply. And because you're asking about micro businesses, we're only talking 2,500 square feet. That's pretty much what you should be ready for when you ask for that final inspection. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I would echo everything Russ said there. Um, somewhat of a follow-up, you know, do we have numbers on how many micro cultivators are in other states? So some states do it, some states don't. Um, it's, 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 you know, tough to say. Um, some states make it work and some people remain a micro cultivator for many years, never expand. Um, some places it's, it is just a stepping stone to bigger operations. I think it's a little bit of both here in New Jersey. Um, want to allow people to cultivate on a scale that allows, you know, diverse businesses, social equity businesses to get their foot into the industry with the opportunity to expand, but not necessarily the requirement to do so. Though New Jersey will make you defend your choice in scale. Um, you do have to come up with some rational, you know, explanation for why you've chose your size, whether it be the combination of what you think the market demand will be, or whether it's, you know, your own financing and access to facility and cultivation materials. Um, and do we see compliance state regulations being strict in the beginning? Uh, definitely that final inspection is going to be where, you know, someone is walking around with a book of the regulations and they're checking things off. Um, in New Jersey, it's actually a little less arduous than other states um, because the regulations have been a little stunted um, from the commission. Um, it's not as crazy as other states, let's just say that. Um, and then the impact from adopting metric um, is, you know, you'll have to use metric, which sucks. So I apologize for that. <laughs> but as far as making it a, you know, a harder compliance requirement, it's, it's, it's not that um, compliance will be more difficult. It might be just a little less fun to use the system, um, but it will be similar as if another system was used, you would still need to comply with the same things. We have, I think, a last question in the chat from Garfield. Yeah. What about acquiring retail licenses through a franchise? Um, so I believe this, yeah, this you can't you can't sell for a for a certain time period for sure, right? Um, possibly at all. the The thing about New Jersey is that they are they they don't want this to happen. Um, they have pretty the personal and entity disclosure forms that Russ mentioned earlier. Um, those require you to provide a ton of documentation related to the actual ownership of the business. Um, so really, New Jersey doesn't want sort of prop and franchise businesses in their state right now. That's not to say it's in, impossible to do. It's just the lift on producing documents and business history would be much harder um, for a franchise or a big business coming into this. Um, as far as buying a retail license from someone who has won one down the road, um, I think there's a I think there's at least a one year time limit, possibly two, um, before the license could be sold. Um, so, yep. Well, we're coming up if, on the. If it is sold, you have to keep all your your social equity and diversity and all that has to stay the same. Yep. Exactly. Thank you, Russ. And I think that about does it for us. Um, if we missed any questions, we will respond via email. But um, hopefully everybody had an educational time and thank you guys all for coming.